a terrorist act of war against this country. I'm told that Osama bin Laden likely deployed more than 50 terrorists. They are now, and I'm quoting here, 90% certain. Somebody provided the logistical support for this operation, and uh, clearly the only person. Bin Laden comes to mind right away, Mr. Bremer. Indeed, he certainly does, bin Laden. This is his M.O. We have to look to the Middle East. We have to look to Osama bin Laden. America Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden. Bin Laden. Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden. He's on almost everyone's list of the most likely suspects for today's attacks. The alleged mastermind, America's most wanted terrorist, Osama bin Laden. We have described the United States as the devil. This is the beast. We'd been traveling, I think, about 60 seconds, and everything went black. And there was this enormous force through me to the floor. It does now to appear to be a major terrorist attack. Arab sources who monitor al-Qaeda have told the BBC that they believe today's explosions in London are almost certainly the work of Al-Qaeda. job can you want to be a nut you can be a nut and you are a nut do you think it's possible yeah. that the four men didn't do it i think it's possible yes conspiracy theories we're just civilians man we're people who have questions conspiracy nutbag theories of his the official story uh, if you uh, look at it under a close magnifying glass doesn't appear to make sense in other words fully fledged nut job conspiracies <laughs> Why did the buildings fall? How could, how could skyscrapers just like crumple to the ground in 10 seconds? Because you're Go a nut! Our Are you one of those crazy conspiracy theorists? Perhaps you're one of George Monbiot's gibbering idiots, infected with the dangerous and highly contagious virus, which sucks out people's brains through their eyes forever adding to that dreaded plague, otherwise known as the Truth Movement. But it's okay, because a Obama administration member, Cass Sunstein, has a solution. In his paper entitled, Conspiracy Theories, Sunstein expertly outlines the following. Those who subscribe to conspiracy theories create serious risks including risks of violence. Indeed, an army of infected, gibbering idiots is a serious threat to any civilized, law-abiding society. The first challenge Sunstein continues is to understand how conspiracy theories prosper. The second challenge, we are told, is to understand how such conspiracy theories might be undermined. The plague must be infiltrated and dismantled. Beware all you gibberers out there. When launching his book entitled Voodoo Histories, a book which claims to debunk every one of the major conspiracy theories throughout recent history, Guardian writer David Aranovich gives us two key words to consider. There is also, as I've said, a, a really wonderful fun to be had confronting the people who do give you this bullshit. Uh, you know, I mean, one of the classic things about conspiracy theory is it, it takes out, you should see it, that coincidence is eliminated as a possibility, an accident in human affairs. In the following presentation, using mainstream and official material, we will analyze the official narratives of 9-11 and 7-7, both as separate and concurrent events, 
and their subsequent reverberations, and conclude that they were nothing more than a monumental series of unprecedented coincidences. Events of 9-11 begin with aircraft going wildly off course. Incredibly, despite radar tracking for almost two hours, the whole of the mighty U.S. Air Force goes AWOL that morning. It's a mind-bending anomaly. We know there were four uh, apparent terrorist uh, attacks, uh, three on the underground uh, metro tube system and one uh, on a bus. How is it that on four separate occasions, on one day, that a trillion dollar military and intelligence infrastructure could fail? These are the first pictures we have in. Uh, this is from Somerset County. Pennsylvania. United Flight 93 crashed into this rural Pennsylvania field that fateful day. It's believed the plane's hijackers were likely targeting the U.S. Capitol or the White House. The bombers planned to fan out north, south, east, and west in the pattern of a cross. Passengers were seen piling onto the underground between Liverpool Street and Aldgate stations. They were about to become victims of the blast from Shezad Tan Weir's bomb. Moments after the train disappears into the tunnel, the station fills with smoke. Simultaneously, another two bombs detonate elsewhere on the underground. The bus bomber Hasib Hussein, when his device failed to explode, he was forced to buy a new battery for his detonator before heading on to a London bus. Another development on Saturday, New York officials revealed at a news conference here in the city that a hijacker's passport was found blocks from the World Trade Center crash site, if you can believe that. No other details were given, but the discovery prompted the FBI and police to expand their, the search area down in lower Manhattan. Well, Dan, not far from here, a passerby found the passport of one of the hijackers. The passport of one of the hijackers on Flight 11 was allegedly found in the rubble. Goes through the fireball, through the side of the plane, and comes down the ground unscathed. On a sidewalk, a thousand feet below. A few days after 7-7, the police said they'd found vital evidence in the wreckage. We have since found personal documents bearing the names of three of those four men close to the seats of three of the explosions. But if the men blew themselves up, how did these documents survive?